Now, the picture up there was taken in the year 2000 in Venezuela, the country where I grew up. That's the most precious thing to me, my family. Four months later, two armed men came into our house and took my three brothers and I and they kidnapped us. When I first thought of the idea of life as we don't know it, this is the first image that came to my mind. But then I realized, actually, life as we don't know it, especially for the purpose of this talk, is not about that. It's not about the negative experiences that shaped us once or will shape us then, but it's actually about the impact we're making on the world. Actually, life as we don't know it is about all those doors that come into our lives in every shape, form, or color that we have never opened. The ones that we have never even seen. Life as we don't know it is about what we don't do once we stop doing something. And I guess through this talk, what I want to do is not necessarily help you find those doors, because that's to each and one of you, but maybe to learn when to turn those knobs and walk through those doors. It's about stepping out of your comfort zone. So a lot of you are probably wondering, fine, so what am I supposed to travel to another world that I don't know? But that's, that's not exactly what life as we don't know is trying to convey. Life as we don't know is about how we react. It's about being that red fellow in the crowd. It's about precisely knowing how to differentiate yourself in different circumstances that are convenient to you. And that's the challenge. You actually have to follow and allow yourself to travel. And yeah, actually, I've traveled. This is Piazza San Marco, and you get to see so many things. But that's not the type of travel I mean. Actually, when I mean travel, I mean allow you the life of the mind to let you go forth. So here we go. The first principle is to generate answers. There's three principles, actually, that I want to bring forth to help you travel. So instead of waiting for answers to determine your fate, my idea is that you should always generate these answers. So when I was in college, I went to the University of Chicago. I ran for office. Some of you have student governments in your schools. I ran for office my first, my second, my third, and my fourth year. Every year, I lost the election. And every year, I tried harder. And every year, I got more support and more votes. And I promise you, those five to 10 minutes when you get the results are the most frustrating that you'll ever get. But in truth, the, what follows is the best, is the solution, is those answers you generate for yourself that help you and guide you to find where you want to navigate. That brings me to my next principle, to set goals. So how do you set these goals? A lot of people think of goals as aspirations. I actually think of them as an unavoidable roadmap that you have to chart for yourself. And there's two things that should go with it. No stops and no excuses. I interned for Google a few times, and I thought I was going to go big in technology. Then my senior year, after an internship at Credit Suisse in finance, I realized I wanted a more technical experience. I tried everything I could to get into this energy group. And I even reached out to the head of Brazil in Credit Suisse, and I asked him to help me, and I still got no's, because it was just impossible for me to get a position in a place that didn't have it for me. But you know what? That was my goal. I wanted to work in this department, and I wanted to get more experience to shape my journey, to help myself generate answers and discover the life that I didn't know. So I found a way. I went to a conference. I met up with a CEO that was giving a speech, and I gave him a letter. And in that letter, I was pretty clear about my goals. And actually, today, I work at Credit Suisse in the energy department. The third one is actually the most important, because you can chart yourself, and you can set those goals. But if you're not accountable, it's pretty difficult to accomplish them. And the way I see it is that you should think of life as a professional pool table. So those of you who've ever played pool and try to use the professional rules, you know that you'll grab that stick and you say, OK, I'm going to put it in that hole. But when you do that, you're held accountable to that. And if you don't, you don't even get the point. So in my life, what I always try to do is to be accountable. Actually, when I was 16 years old, I wanted to see how far my arm could reach, farther than my eye was showing me. And I told my parents I was going to ship shoes to Africa. And you know, naturally, they laughed. I actually was in the United States. I, didn't even, I wasn't even allowed to travel outside of the country because of my immigration status. 
So then, you know, people left, and I made a website, and it said I was going to ship shoes to Africa. I made some business cards, cost me like 30 bucks. And I went to my school, I was a president of student government, and I told everyone, hey, everyone, just bring in shoes, we're sending them to Africa. Man, that's a great way to be held accountable. I had no idea how I was going to send those shoes to Africa. And I probably didn't until like a year after I had started that organization. I got friends, I got volunteers, we expanded to like 30 cities. And I promise you, people still thought I knew how I was going to send those shoes to Africa. So, you know, if I wouldn't have done all of that marketing and all of that website, and actually this is a TV interview I went on, so I don't even know how many people were holding me accountable for it. But if I didn't do all of that, I don't think I would have been pressured enough to know that I had to do something about it. I, sent, I even sent a letter to Frederick Smith. This guy founded FedEx. And I said, hey man, I really need your help. I'm super being held accountable right now. <laughs> and he's, he got back to me saying, you know, we can't help you. <laughs> but I was still being held accountable and I went down the ranks till I found somebody at FedEx in an airport. And I promise you, if I had the pictures, you'd love it. But this is one of them, me driving that cart in the Miami International Airport. I think that's illegal. And I'd probably be in prison if I was over 18. But we moved like 6,000 pairs of shoes, my brothers and I after a ton of volunteers helped me, and we shipped those shoes to Nigeria, to a community where those people were barefoot. You know, it all comes down at the end to take an action. You can embrace these three principles, you can write them down, you can think through them in the morning, but if you don't take action after you've put them there, you will never get to those goals. Neither live the life that you don't know. So, you know, my freshman year of college, I went to this competition and I had a great venture idea, and I lost. So I lost in student government and I lost in pitching ideas. But if you don't fail enough times, you will never know the gratification that you get from succeeding at something else. So then we went to something else and we succeeded that same year. And I am very sure that the reason we succeeded is because I knew the taste of having lost many times. You know, it's all about picking yourself up. It'll get really messy, especially depending on what you're doing. This kid must have tried so many times to put the food in his mouth. <laughs> but eventually, I'm sure he got it, because at the end of the day, he was smiling. That, to me, is the biggest showing of failure, and few people can see that in one image. One principle I stand by, which is outside of my three, is to always ask questions. I went to a conference in Germany with thousands of people from around the world, and then I told myself, I'm this little kid from Venezuela, compared to all these people out here, the president of Mozambique is speaking. Who knows where I come from? And I'm standing in this room and they said, does anyone have a question? And actually no one did. First thing I did is raise my hand. And I didn't have a question, but by the time I was up, I came up with one. Ask questions and you will see where life will take you. Actually, put yourself out there. I went to this event in Chicago, the World Summit of Peace Novel Laureates. That guy over there falling asleep next to Gorbachev is the Dalai Lama. You'll learn a lot about life and about how simple people are. And it'll make you more humble, but at the same time stronger about the little things you'll catch from these things. That's the real life I didn't know. Now here, this is one of the latest projects I did in the university before I graduated. One of the, most of my friends don't, well, probably don't even know about it. But it's the one I'm most proud of because it embraces the three principles I said. A friend and I found in an inner city of Chicago, and you can see this picture down here. It was a flooded field. Actually, it wasn't a field, it was just a flood. And we knew that kids used to play there in the summers. They used to play baseball. Baseball is a big thing for me and people from my country. And we went out there, we set our goals even, and we were being held accountable. Because we met up with these guys. They were the athletic association, and we told them, hey guys, we're going to raise a lot of money, we're going to build a stadium here. Keep in mind, I was 20 years old. I wasn't even from that community. We're going to set up a little league, we're going to bring uniforms, and we're going to put 300 kids to play. And once more, I got myself into that, and my parents told me, like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but honestly, it's my way of putting myself out there and being held accountable. Once again, I was being held accountable. And by the end of the project, if most of you can see, that's me at Restaurant Depot with like $3,000 of food for opening day. If you go on YouTube and search Canaryville Little League, what my friends and I put together, you'll see around 700 people walking the streets of Chicago, inaugurating this new stadium that you'll see on the top right, and about 300 kids from the inner city who would otherwise be just playing 
are on the streets or doing who knows, God knows what, are now playing baseball. It's one of the most exciting projects I've done. Not so much for the reward of it, at the end of seeing it, but for knowing that I could actually embrace those three principles effectively after having lost in so many different ways. So, a lot of you might wonder, where does this take you? How does this make sense to you? You don't have to go out there and make a little league or ship shoes to Africa or in many other ways. You don't even have to run for office of student government in whatever school you go to. What's important is that you remember who you are, where you come from. What's important is that you remember that there is a life that you don't know because you're a fool if you don't think so. And what's beautiful is that you have so many years ahead, especially if you're young like me, to discover that life, to embrace these principles. And there are many ways in which you can do it, and that's up to you to figure out. Actually, there's a few thoughts that I always try to keep in mind, and I always change them. Because as you can see up here on the right, I claim there's no secrets but to have a plan. That's just in paper, because I really I'm not sure what my plan is. I'm not sure where my plan is going. And the reason, if that were me, I'm using an erasable market, marker is because that plan changes all the time. But you still need to have a plan. So first, other than my three principles, here's what I want you to take away. Never let the mentor you need be someone you wouldn't want to imitate. There's going to be a lot of coaches. Probably my most important coach is my father but I still seek a mentor somewhere else. I need to seek something in him or her that I still want to imitate, and I challenge you to do that. Surround yourself with successful people. And this sounds very controversial, because what is successful? It's not money, it's not being artistic, it's not even having been able to find the life you don't know. Successful is whatever you want it to be. You know, don't settle for less than what you actually want. I've learned that because I've settled before, and it taught me that that was the wrong move. And I hope you also settle sometimes, because only through your own experience will you be able to move forth. The most important part is that you need to keep telling the world where you're headed. If you don't, they're going to shift you in their direction. And like the previous TED talk we heard, there's a lot of videos out there that will try to shape you and form you, but if you don't grab onto the wheel of the car you're driving, you're just going to go with the traffic. Do all the things you think, but something I learned is definitely don't think all the things you do. You have no idea how many times I've tried to put myself there and be held accountable, and looking back, I would have probably never done it if I thought about it too much. And get the no's, if any. Many people will tell you no. Heck, my family told me, stop trying to get that offer in finance. Just go work at Google, go do something else, go try a startup. The real deal? is when you realize that what you want is what you're pursuing and the no is there. So I challenge you to go back, find out what those three principles are, because those were mine, and really find the world that you don't know. Thank you.